Since the dawn of Cinema 4D, man has looked towards the sky and said, how does make clouds? And then along came Pyro Cluster, and it took so long to render anything decent, there's scarcely any point in using it. Now that is some good render times. And by good, I mean terrible. So then along came Physical Sky and Volumetric Clouds, and well, I mean, just look at those clouds. They look like ass. I mean, seriously, are these clouds or a human ass? I literally can't tell. But now, Lightspeed Tutorials has thankfully found a quick, simple and gimmicky way to make fully 3D clouds. Excellent. Okay, so there's going to be two parts of this tutorial. Uh, that is basically going to be modeling the cloud and texture in the cloud. The first thing I'm going to do is in our scene, I'm going to place a, a figure object in. This is just to give us a, um, a sort of a reference of how large our cloud objects would be. So to model our cloud, uh, that's right, we're going to be making this cloud from geometry. Uh, we're going to start off with a uh, sphere object. Uh, this sphere is basically going to become our clouds. I'm just using the uh, the guy as reference. I'm going to scale it up to be about the size that I believe a cloud should be. So I think something like that compared to the guy seems like a good size. Maybe I'll just make it a little bit longer, uh, larger, I should say. Uh, so now we zoom out and the first thing we want to do is uh, select the sphere. Uh, we can delete the guy now, so we, we, he's done with. So we select our sphere, we go into object and we change our segments from 24 to let's say 200. We need quite a dense mesh for this. Um, so we want to go into our deformation menu and choose displacer and place the displacer inside the, uh, the sphere. Uh, so now with the displacer selected, we want to go into shading and we want to go into the shader menu and choose noise. Uh, now at the minute nothing has happened. Uh, that's because the uh, sphere is so large that we're not seeing the effect. So we want to go uh, back and click on the display so go into the object menu and change height from 0 0.1 to uh, let's try 100 see how that looks 100 seems pretty good um, I am working in meters um, if you're not working in meters and you want to uh, change your measurements in cinema 4d you need to go down to edit preferences uh, go to units and here you can uh, sort of change uh, change the units but for this tutorial I'm working in meters uh, so now we click on the display so go back into shade and we want to click on our noise thumbnail uh, now we're in the noise thumbnail we need our global scale to be a lot larger than what it currently is so I'm going to say 100,000 and see how that looks um, that's that, that's not 100,000 that's 10,000 uh, 100,000 there we go um, so now we're getting the overall shape of what our cloud is going to be uh, personally I feel that the uh, noise uh, option should be sent to a uh, Naki. I believe Naki gives us the uh, the best sort of uh, results. So I'm going to click on that and uh, I'm going to change the octaves down from five to four and see how that looks. Perhaps even three and uh, you know what I think we're actually going to go as low as two. The lower the octaves the more simple the uh, the shape looks. Uh, now we have this I feel that I want to go back into the display so go into objects and just decrease the uh, the height a bit. Something like that looks uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, finally, I'm going to go into the displacer, go back into shading, back into the noise, and maybe I'm just going to play around with the seeds. Uh, the seed value, when you change the value, it essentially randomly reshuffles the uh, the noise effect. So I'm just going to uh, randomly reshuffle it until I get something that I think it looks pretty interesting. Uh, for now, this looks pretty cool. Uh, so I want to click on our sphere, go into coordinates, and I'm just going to crush it down a little bit on the uh, Y and stretch it out a little bit on the uh, on the X. Um, and that was pretty cool to me. So that is half the tutorial done already. We've uh, created our cloud object, uh, we've modelled it, now we need to texture it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new material and apply that material onto the cloud. Double click onto the material to uh, go into it. So essentially what we're going to be doing here, we're going to be providing a Fresnel shader to the luminance and the alpha channel to get the cloud effect. Uh, I'm going to start off on the alpha, click on the tick box to activate it, and I'm going to go down and bring in our Fresnel shader. Uh, I want to go into the Fresnel shader and I want to bring the white all the way over to the right hand side and move the black to around right about somewhere in the uh, in the middle. So straight away uh, you should hopefully be able to see that we're kind of getting this uh, sort of a wispy, sort of a faded cloud effect going on. Uh, one important thing to note whilst we're in the Fresnel option is we want to choose uh, this menu here, change it from front and back to front only. Uh, and maybe I'm just going to push the black up a little bit. This is where we start to get to the phase where we just want to play around and tweak until we're happy. But I think for now I'll do a quick render of that. I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking. So now uh, I want to turn reflectance off and turn luminance on. And again, we're going to add the Fresnel shader once again to the luminance channel. Uh, going into the Fresnel shader, I'm going to change the uh, color black to a more of a sort of a, a light blue color. So um, let's have a little play around, I think. Something like that would be pretty cool. And to sort of emulate the silver lining effect of the cloud, um, we're going to keep the white as it is and just maybe crush it down a little bit. Let's do a quick render on that and see how it's looking. 
maybe I'll make the blue a little bit darker just so we can have a better idea of just what's going on here. So hit render again. So essentially what this Fresnel has given us, it's given us in the centre of the cloud is this more blue colour and as, the, uh, the, uh, as we get further away to the edges we get this sort of like white effect, we get our silver lining effect of the cloud. Um, essentially uh, the tutorial is now complete, we've created our cloud object, um, we can now go ahead and uh, essentially do a lot of fine tuning and uh, tweaking. Uh, one thing I'm going to do uh, is select our sphere and I'm just basically going to duplicate it maybe about four or five times just to give us a, uh, a, a sort of like a larger cloud effect. So the first duplication I've made, maybe I'm just going to go ahead and uh, rotate it 180 degrees and I'm also going to go ahead and maybe just change the, uh, the scaling parameters a bit just to differentiate it from the, uh, from the original copy and I'm going to go ahead and make a few more copies now. Okay, so that's pretty much going to form the basis of our cloud object. In fact, I'm going to select both our, all the spheres that uh, comprise that, group it, uh, go to objects, group objects, and just rename that to uh, cloud. Uh, the last thing I'm going to go ahead and do here is light this scene. Uh, I'm going to bring a light object into our scene. I'm just going to move it back a little bit. And this is the advantage of creating the cloud this way. Because the cloud is created from 3D geometry, uh, we can kind of get all this nice uh, shading hit in the geometry as opposed to whether this was, like, say, for example, a flat texture. So I'm going to take our light object and we are going to, uh, down here under type, we're going to change it from type omni to type infinite. And I'm just going to scale this up a little bit just so we can see the direction in which the, uh, the light is pointing. And let's just uh, scale down a bit and uh, go ahead and in and add some shadows into this. I'm going to go select the light, come to shadow, go to area, and maybe just push it up a little bit. And uh, let's have a look at this now. So now, essentially, what we're going to go and do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, populate the sky so it's full of cloud objects. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tweak involved in this. Um, so I'm just going to hit fast forward, and we're going to see what we uh, end up with. So that took uh, 11 seconds to render that, which I think is a pretty good uh, render time, and I'm pretty pleased with how the, uh, how the clouds have uh, turned out. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. So this ends the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found it helpful. This scene here is one I made earlier using exactly the same techniques I've just gone through. You can download it in the video description on YouTube. Also, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if y'all headed over to my Facebook page. I'm currently working on producing my very own 3D animated pilot episode, and I document the production of it on this page. If you like what you'd see, I'd super appreciate you hitting the page with a like. Anyway, I've got to go now because I'm all of a sudden come under attack by Zulus. Ah, oh, damn it, not again. <laughs>